Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up continuous integration using GitHub Actions on GitHub for our ASP Donor Core project. There is a video coming for continuous integration and continuous deployment in the software engineering fundamental series that I'm doing, but for now I'm only going to very briefly explain what continuous integration is. Continuous integration or CI is the process of automating the build and testing of code every time a team member commits changes to version control. This was just me reading the description out of Wikipedia or something, but fundamentally what it is, is every time we check in code, we want a server to run this code and run the test for this code. So build and test, and then report back how did this process go. We usually have a server like Team City, or you might have heard of uh, Circle CI or AppVega or many other systems that can do this job. But now GitHub has this system integrated in our project. And since our project is on GitHub, we can just utilize it. It's a very simple thing to set up. And I'm going to only focus on building and testing my project on this video. In the future video, I'm going to show you how we can deploy as well. But now just continuous integration. So before I click actions in this project, because I was testing this feature before I made this video, I want to show you how the new experience looks like in a project that never had it set up for this repository. So I'm going to go to my Cosmonaut project and I'm going to click actions. And this is what you're going to see for the first time. And what we're doing is we want to select from these pre-made templates, the ASP donor core template, and we're going to say set up this workflow. And we're going to copy this YAML text here. And I'm going to go back to my YouTube ASP donor core series. And I'm going to click actions. Ignore this because I've already tested this to make sure it works. And then I'm going to paste this text here. I'm also going to name this workflow ASP net core YAML. And now I have my workflow set up here. However, our project is not a 2.2, it's a 3.0.100. Once I change that, I can actually go down here and say, commit this in a new branch. And I'm going to create this new commit. And this should trigger a new GitHub action here for my project. So as you can see here, I have my uh, new patch branch here. So I can click on that. And you'll see here that GitHub is starting to running this workflow. Let's go ahead and read what the workflow file will do. So first, you have a name for this workflow. I just have the default ASP donor core CI. And then you have the trigger on value where we say on every time we push code in the repository. And then we have a bunch of jobs. The only job we have now is build. And what this will do is it says, I'm going to run this on latest Ubuntu, which is just Linux. And then we're going to use a few predefined workflows. This is the checkout. So we're going to check out our code. And this is the setup.net. So this will set up the .NET environment on the server. And we're going to specify the version that we want to set up here. And then another step that we're running is build with .NET. So we're going to run a command. And this is the .NET SDK command, .NET build configuration release. So let's see what happens in our CI if we just run this file. So as you can see, we're setting up the, the first checkout job and the setup.net job. So we're downloading the actions from the repository. And then we are running the checkout process, which is just GitHub checking out our code on the CI server. Then we are setting up .NET Core. So we're downloading .NET Core from the .NET Core server and we're installing it on the VM or wherever this thing runs. And then we, this is our build with .NET steps. So if I go back to the code, this is the step. And we say, yeah, let's just build our project. And I think that's not as responsive as I'd want to, but this actually builds the project to completion and eventually says complete job and we just terminate the process on the server. So currently we're just building our project and this works fine, but we also want to be able to run our tests. So let's go back and modify our script a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the ASP Core tutorial, find the branch, and then I'm going to find the file. The file is by default located in the github.workflows and then it's here. And if I press edit, you see, you also get this GitHub Actions next step thingy. And this tells you that you can actually have on push to specific branches. You can also have on pull requests only or on master only. It's very flexible. It's very nice. You can also have it on a schedule. So run this workflow on a nightly basis or once a week. And this is great if you want to have something like smoke tests or just automated tests. It's, it's an amazing tool. And then you can specify where you want this to run on. So currently we're running on latest Ubuntu, but I'm going to show you a cool feature in a bit. Let me just skip this for now. We can also have conditionally running steps or jobs. So if this succeeds, then do it or on specific events, this do it, but we won't get that complicated in this video. All I want to do now is I want to copy this name run that we use for building and I'm going to duplicate it essentially. 
and then let me just bring this up it doesn't allow me and then i'm gonna say run tests here and i'm gonna change this to from dotnet build to dotnet test and this is enough for the system to locate our solution file find which project is a test project and run the test on the ci server so as part of the build process so if i go ahead and say commit directly to my branch i can then go back to the action so let's open that here we go this is already triggered just some seconds ago and now if i show you this build process you'll be able to see every step and how it takes place so first we're going to set up the job same thing we did before and then if i collapse that we have the run test here so let's see how this works currently it is building our project you can see all the logs here you can also see it on the website which is very neat very nice let me just collapse this because we don't really care about it but we do care about the run test bit so let's wait for that so as you can see running tests now if i click on that it should start showing me the logs as here you go it shows that it actually runs the application as part of the integration tests if i expand that you see all the logs here and you can see that the test run successfully total two tests past two tests in five seconds which is awesome because now every time i check in code even though i haven't run the tests locally because i forgot ci will run and tell me hey this thing is failing and you should go check what's happening so if i quickly just show you how you can merge this as well we can compare and merge to master and if i create this pull request with my new profile for a github actions you see that all checks have passed and if i expand this all checks this is the asp.net core ci build so if i go on details you'll see that i'm actually not allowed to merge for requests unless my workflow has passed which is great so i will go ahead now and merge this pull request and confirm it and then once this is merged again let me just delete the branch if i go to github actions this will be triggered again for master now and master will be validated that it's working fine it's building tests are going through it's all great the last feature i want to show which i think is applicable to this is called the matrix and this is an awesome feature because you don't necessarily always know where your code will run and that's specifically true when you're making an sdk or a library or something so github actions actually allows you to run your code so your ci on many different environments so if i let me show you how you can set this up if i go on edit workflow and uh, I, th I think I could rename this to build and test actually because we're doing two things. Currently, we're only running on Ubuntu latest. If I scroll down here, you can see that this allows us to run it on different operating systems. So I could make one of each and then go here and say Windows 19 and paste that and yada yada yada. But then this file gets a bit too big. We don't want to do that. So what we can do instead is we can use the matrix OS. And if I copy this, as we see in the example, and I paste this here, then I can specify a matrix in the strategy. Strategy. And then in the strategy, I can have a matrix. And in the matrix, I can have OS. And the OS I want is all these three. So Ubuntu latest, Windows latest, and Mac OS latest and I paste it here and now these steps this single job will run on all three environments let me just commit straight into master and see what happens when I do that so I'm going to commit in master and I'm going to click actions and this should trigger a build now in master and let's see how the build looks like as you can see it used to be build and test or just build before but now we also run on Ubuntu latest Windows latest and Mac OS latest. This is amazing because even though you might be working on Windows or I know in my team some people work with Mac, some people didn't work with Linux, you don't have to work on the same environment but you do want your code to behave in the exact same way and GitHub Actions give you this functionality to actually just run on the cloud on their environment and report back hey this works on all three. Let's wait and see how the response looks like once it runs on everything. So we can navigate through the UI and you can see that the Ubuntu latest is on the build process. The Windows is again on the build project as well and the Mac should be on the same level. Oh, it's running the test. So they all run in parallel. It's not one after the other. And you can see that the Mac OS is succeeded. If I go on the Windows, 
it should be running the tests anytime now or it's still building and again ubuntu is also successful so we only succeed if all three of them are successful if one of them fails then we say hey we cannot push this code because somebody might run it on windows and it won't work on windows or it might not work on linux or mac os let's wait for the windows one to be successful as well hooray all of them passed we have the green tick here our action has passed the workflow is successful in three environments that is awesome that's all i had for you for this video it's a very short one but i want to show this great feature because i really really like it and i'll be using it Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And last thing I want to mention is that GitHub enabled the sponsorships for my GitHub account. So as you can see here, there's a sponsor button and you can choose to go to my sponsor page and pledge an amount of money if you like what I do. If not, a thank you is enough. So disregard this, ignore this. If you don't feel like chipping in, the videos will be always free on YouTube. So like I said, thanks for watching and keep coding.